today on Cruising. Uh, well, uh, it's a car that my brother and I built back in the early 80s. Because I had one 30 years ago and I sold it for a minivan. He had a car for about 40 years. The car itself has 53,000 original miles on it. And when I was taking the drums off the front, I found a lot of cobwebs inside of the drums. Cruising from the Blue Monkey on Father's Day starts now. Nothing says Father's Day like classic cars. That's what the folks at Blue Line Classics think, and well, that's what we all think, and that's why we're here at the Blue Monkey in North Royalton for their car show. Fantastic turnout, so much to check out. Let's get it started. My dad gave me this car last fall because uh, he, he got a knee replacement and a hip replacement, and he, it's a three speed on the column, so he couldn't drive the car anymore. So obviously it's a great car to, to have, but also you have all sorts of memories. How long did he have the car, should I say? He had a car for about 40 years. The car itself has 53,000 original miles on it, which I know are true because he's had it for so long. Uh, it's had one repaint, so the paint is very old. The paint's probably 40, over 40 years old because the guy that he bought it from had it painted, so. Uh, what are some of the memories you have? Just basically, I mean, he, he didn't drive the car a whole lot. Um, so like, we didn't like ride in it like his kids too much here and there, but uh, just good memories with him. He always loved the car a real lot. So a lot of good memories there. Did you have to do anything to it? Yeah, so uh, uh, the car needed a lot when he gave it to me. It had been sitting for quite a while and um, I did, over the winter, I did all the brakes, redid all the brakes, redid all the steering, new tires, new wheels, and just basically went through the whole thing mechanically. And then I had a new seat covers put on and new convertible top. So the hula girl was dad's? The hula girl was mine. I don't know if dad would dig the hula girl or not. <laughs> well, it's good that you put your personal touch on it. Yeah, so I started, he said take it and do what you want with it. So I sort of just took it and made it mine. And so is the skull in the front, you or dad? That's me. That's all me. The pinstripe is all me. I was gonna say, yeah. the pinstripe just looks so cool. And it's just interesting the way you can almost see different things in it. Was that your vision or did you give it to a pinstripe guy and say, come um, on I got a like? really good pinstripe guy. I'll give him a plug, his name's Chewy. He just got married yesterday in Vegas. So he's gonna see this. But I, I, I wanted to just stripe it a little bit because the car is so big, it's such a big area, and just to break it up a little bit, so. So besides, obviously, memories you have with your dad over this car, um, what, what do you really enjoy about it? I'll tell you, the, the best thing about this car, it weighs 3,850 pounds, okay? So you take it on a bumpy road, and it's like sitting in your living room. That hula girl don't even budge. She stays still, she doesn't even move. I'm telling you, the car rides like a dream. Better than a brand new car. What do people say when they see this car? You gotta get a lot of comments. Yeah, I get a lot of compliments on the car. People just, because um, you don't see a whole lot of this year. You see a lot of Galaxies. You don't see a lot of convertibles. And you don't see a lot of the 62s. You see a lot of 63s, 64s, 65s. But the 62, I think, is more of a rare car. So a lot of people um, you know, pay a lot of attention to it and you, you just don't see them, so. So why did you want this? Well, this is the second one I had. I had one back in 1971, and that was my daily driver. This was uh, 42 years later that I got this car. Uh, what was the criteria then? Well, I had my own, my own personal rule, uh, an 80-20 rule is that I seen 80% 80, 80 of the car and 20% was either hidden from my view or I just plain overlooked it. You can look right through stuff a lot of times. What jumped out at you about this with the color? In 1970, this is a rare car for color. They only made 916 of these cars in subline. So, and I didn't find that out until I had the car for five years. And then I got a, uh, a, a sheet from one of the forum guys that had all the breakdown of the colors that they made in uh, 1970 
for the uh, JS-23, which is what this one is. And then I found out, much to my surprise, it's one of 916. So I didn't know it when I bought it. Uh, what else did you learn about the car? Well, I'm the third owner. Uh, this car was built in California, the one year that Chrysler built e-bodies in California. And it was at the LA plant, and that's where this car was produced, and it went to Arizona for 24 years. Then it went to Detroit for about 18 years, and then I picked it up from there. So you go from Arizona heat to Detroit winter. Well, the car was in, in the garage uh, quite a bit up there. I tended to believe the previous owner. It was a drum brake car. I did put discs on the front. And when I was taking the drums off the front, I found a lot of cobwebs inside of the drums, which tended to verify he was telling me the truth. I thought it was anyhow, but it kind of solidified that I was getting a straight story. Uh, we look at this car and it just brings so many memories from so many people. Um, and you also remember, these things are fast. What's, it, what's the engine like? Well, this is a, the, the base model 383. It is the uh, ENCODE engine, the high performance engine. So from the factory back in 1970, it had 335 horsepower. It moves you along pretty quick. And consequently, the rear end in the car makes it very good for freeway driving. So I can get out on the freeway if I have to and just cruise right along without uh, stressing anything out. Uh, when you get inside, does it take you back 40 something years to high school? Well, it does all the time. As a matter of fact, the funny story with the first one I had is the girl I was dating, we were in the Metro Parks. And it was at, at night and I let her drive on the grass say because she wanted to drive the car. So we only went a short distance and the Metro Park Police show up. And so we don't have your lights on. Well, of course, she couldn't find the light switch because she didn't know where it was, you know. So it turned out that the, uh, the ranger happened to be uh, a high school friend of mine. So he just said, hey, don't do that anymore. So, and that was in my first Challenger I had. So uh, I just think about that when I go on the grass in the Metro Parks, so. Uh, this car is gorgeous. Is there anything you want to add? Anything we're missing about it? As a way um, to look at it, it's, it's unrestored in that respect. It's, uh, it's an original car. It's been repainted once, but I don't know by who. And I'm the third owner. So the first or second owner, whatever they did, you inherit that when you buy the car. Has it always been your goal to have the fastest Uber in town? <laughs> uh, no, not really, but uh, yeah, that, uh, that is uh, unusual. I'll get some comments on that sticker for sure. What was this? Uh, originally, it was a, uh, a 1970 SS Nova. All right, so you, you took a look at it and said, I want to race this, but then I want to drive it on the streets too. What's going on, man? Uh, well, uh, it's a car that my brother and I built back in the early 80s um, and we drag raced it uh, and uh, he passed away three years ago so uh, I got it back and uh, we converted it or I converted it into a, a car you could drive on the street so so how many people pull up you next in their Honda and go <laughs> in their Honda go let's run Wayne yeah right uh, no not really uh, it's funny, I, I, Gail, my uh, girlfriend, has driven it, and uh, you know Harley riders will give you the thumbs up and stuff like that. And uh, so I, we get back to the house, and uh, I said, "Well, how was it? How'd you like driving it?" She goes, "Oh, it was all right." And I go, "Well, I, I bet it was more than that because a, a Harley guy is not going to give you a thumbs up in your Kia Soul, you know, <laughs> which is her normal car." So. What happened with this engine? What do we got? Uh, it's a 572 uh, cubic inch uh, Chevrolet, uh, four and a half inch bore, four and a half inch stroke, uh, 10 and a half to one compression so I can run premium fuel. It has uh, nice drivability. And which is what I think, because when I look in the interior, I think, yeah, you made it for the street, it's comfort. Oh yeah, no, it's a minimal uh, uh, amenities as far as, yeah, very crude car, so. That yeah. could be why Gail isn't enjoying <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, right.
That's true. Uh, I, well, I put the horns on it. Uh, I got the ACDF horns from uh, Fleetwood Cadillac. So, because he had to have horns, I put turn signals, brake lights, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So, you, you know, semi drivable on the street. Uh. So, when I see this, I think, all right, speed, racing. But then on the paint on the side with the Battlestar, do you have like phasers? What is going on here? <laughs> Well, that, my brother uh, loved that TV show that was from the early 80s, uh, Battlestar. And the one, and I never knew this actually, but because when he said he wanted to put that on the car, I mean, that's kind of corny, you know. But here, I guess there was a, a, one of the spaceships in that TV series, Battlestar, and it was called the Nova. What's your favorite part about this car? It's low to the ground, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it rides. Uh, Kind of rough, but it, I mean, it is a nice, a uh, uh, lot of fun to drive, you know. Though. So when you're driving on the street, is that the travel height or do you have it on bags? Uh, no, that is the ride height, yeah. So you have to be careful uh, a lot of times, you know, going up driveways and stuff. Uh, the engine, I had a dyno uh, when it was built. It has 850 horsepower at the flywheel. So, uh, yeah, if you like floor it, it just knocks the tires off, so. So if I go to my app and I want to get a hold of Wayne, I don't go to Uber Black, I go to Uber Galaxy, <laughs> Galaxy uh, Battlestar and you'll show up. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We've already seen a lot at Father's Day Car Show, but there's so much more with the Blue Line Classics guys because it's their show. So that's why we've got Tim, Jeff, and your dads. Why do we have dads here? Well, our dads are here because our dads are the one that pretty much got us started. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. And which dad is responsible for Fred Sanford? Well, my dad found him on eBay a few years ago, so. Uh... That was my idea. <laughs> which is very vital. So when do we get Lamont? It's a big dummy plate, come on. Maybe we'll next year, we'll see. All right, well, we'll come back to check that out. But meanwhile, we've got a lot more cars to check out now. Stick around. Blue Line Classics wants to buy your classic car. We buy excellent condition classic, antique, and muscle cars and trucks. If you're interested in buying an investment grade classic, antique, or high performance muscle car, Blue Line Classics is a place for you. Visit our showroom in North Royalton, Ohio, and when you do find your dream car, we offer very competitive finance and transportation options. Blue Line Classics takes the hassle out of selling and buying classic cars. Check out our inventory at bluelineclassics.com. We hope to see you on our list of satisfied customers worldwide. Gearstar prides itself on building the best high-performance transmissions and converters. Trusted by the top engine builders, Nelson Racing, Prestige Motors, Blueprint Engines, and West Coast Engines. Gearstar combines the best master technicians in the industry with a minimum of 25 years experience using U.S.-made parts, dyno, test, and certify each build to the unique needs of the customer. If you want it perfect the first time, Gearstar is for you. Classic Bronco comes to life at Rust Belt Bronco. Rust Belt Bronco's automotive experts reverse engineered the original Bronco to provide its customers the highest grade reproduction Bronco tubs and parts in the country. A century of combined expertise goes into every one of our vintage Bronco restorations or body tub reproductions. Our team of craftsmen can produce up to five reproduction tubs a week ready for your frame faster than any of our competitors. We've been helping early Bronco owners and builders with their restorations and builds longer and with more expertise than any shop in North America. Check us out on the web or call us today. Welcome back to cruising. All right, Dave, why did we want a 34 Ford Vicky? Because I had one 30 years ago and I sold it for a minivan. Okay? Oh, <laughs> and you're admitting that? Yes, I sold it for a minivan and I told it, I said, one day I'm going to have me another one. And so now this is what I got. I got another one. I got a fun toy now. What's special about the Vicky? Everything. It's done. It's a nice car. It's a great driver. It's a hot rod going down the road. It's got a nice 302 in it automatic behind it. It's a fun car to drive. But you sacrificed, not only did you sacrifice a Vicky for a minivan, but you sacrificed a 41 for this. I did. So yes. why? why? What was about, what did you like about the 41 and why did you the want 41, I always wanted one and I couldn't pass it up, so I built the 41. It took me uh, 10 pickup truck loads, I brought it in, okay, and it took me about a year and a half to get it on the road. I took trophies everywhere. It was an awesome car, but this came about, so I took this. We traded, we kind of did a swap and some cash. And uh, how many pickups? None. I drove it home. And there you That's. go. 
a little that, easier, huh? Oh yeah, it's a lot easier, yes. But you also had to do some work with it. I did, I had to do front end work to it, clean it up basically, uh, just stupid things. Motor, I did a little bit of motor work on it, changed valve covers and things like that. All in all, just made it to me. So obviously you have the memories of your old one. Oh, I do. Getting this one. Uh, but what, what's really special about, about this car? Nothing really, it's just a hot rod. And I just enjoy <laughs> it. I enjoy old cars, so I like messing around. That's all. What's your favorite part of it? Uh, driving it, I gotta say. It's, it's a nice driver, it is. It gets on the road, I do 80 mile an hour and let go of the steering wheel and it's all fun and it's all fine. It's nice, I like that. It's, it's an attention driver. It is, oh yeah, everybody's been looking at it. It's, yes, it's nice. Um, but what, is, what are some of your favorite comments you've heard when you've taken it Everybody out? likes the color. The color on it's really nice. Everybody likes the interior. I didn't open up the engine compartment today because it didn't, didn't feel like it. It's just an awesome car. It's a great car. I really enjoy the hell out of it. Yes, it is. It's really nice. Uh, the grill, the hood, the running boards, and the headlights are all original in 1934, and I got a nice, 13, a ni nice 1934 title that goes with it. So yes, that's, that's awesome for me. Why did we never see Chevelle wagons? Why did you want this car? Well, I like having a car that's different than, you know, what you see at like, you know, your regular car shows and cruise-ins. And I like, you know, 67 Chevelle is probably one of my favorite muscle cars. So you kind of get, you know, both rolled into one now. That's a fast grocery getter. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, but it's not your typical Chevelle, which was already fast enough. What's under the hood? Uh, a six liter LS2 motor with a six speed auto uh, transmission. Now, when you got this car, a lot of it was already in really great shape. Correct. But you also did some stuff. Now, yeah. tell you, first of all, with the interior of the dash? The interior was uh, you know, already done. Uh, just updated the dash with uh, the trim panels, and we put a Dakota Digital dash in to uh, make it look more like kind of stock looking, but have the digital technology. Obviously, you get the grocery store comments, but uh, what else do people say when they see this thing? Well, you know, a lot of guys like it because, like, oh, I can see my wife driving this. You know, like a family man who's got kids, they can, you know, they can put the kids in the back and him and his wife could sit in the front and they'd have their, you know, muscle car SUV. <laughs> What's your favorite part of this? Uh, probably, you know, being, you know, the LS swap. I mean, you know, I've been with LS swaps for a long time now, but I've kind of always wanted an LS swap muscle car. So, you know, when I found it, I'm like, now's my opportunity to, to get it and then make it mine, make it my own. Uh, so when you were a kid, was this what you visioned? No, no not at all. <laughs> what were you visioning? You know, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, my, my dad liked European cars. You know, he had like a, he had a Jaguar back in the 60s, an XKE, and then he had an Alfa Romeo. And so I kind of always figured I'd want to get into like European cars. But when I got an opportunity to, to purchase one, I'm like, no, I want, I want to go, you know, old school type car, but with modern looks. What's your favorite part of this? Uh, just, just the overall, like the, the stance, look, you know. It, it looks mean, but it's not like, it's kind of intimidating, you know, for, you know, for a wagon. Up next. And if you look at it here, we did a custom powder cutting finish on this. The Rust Belt Boys are next on Cruising. On this edition of Off-Roading with the Rust Belt Boys, right here in front of us, we have the Buckeye Bronco frame here in front of us. This guy's a huge Ohio State fan. This thing is laid out here. We have the face mask gray, which we masked from an original Ohio State helmet on the paint. The bumpers are gonna be also the face mask gray. The truck we showed pictures of before is the scarlet and gray. It looks really, really sharp. We can't wait to show you this build when it's done. Right here, we have a four-link suspension system on this from James Duff, five and a half inch lift. And uh, if you look at the build here, it's really, really good. We have the F-150 steering box from Ford Motor Company, um, custom fuel tank from BC Broncos. It's really gonna rock out here. Now with this custom built truck here, this is a frame off complete build here. Um, gonna be very expensive, full custom. Um, and we're basically a custom shop here when it comes to doing full custom stuff. And we can do your normal stuff as well. But this build here is um, going to be very sweet. We have football leather from Rawlings. It's going to be uh, the football material 
for the seats. So that's going to be really, really cool uh, on this interior. We have AstroTurf, that's the carpet. Um, and we're also going to do some field goal stuff here with some yellow paint to uh, touch that off. But Ohio State fan here, really, really cool. We can't wait to show it to you when it's done. But we're making progress. And we have the Coyote motor that's going to go in this here with the Atlas transfer case. Um, so we'll progress this build here over the next few uh, episodes we do. Now, we're also building the shop truck here, too. I'm going to show you the frame here from Powder Coat, um, how we got the Powder Coat from Youngstown Powder Coating, and uh, we did a custom finish on that as well. So this is the uh, Bronco here we're building in-house with our new one-piece quarter panel on it. And if you look at it here, we did a custom Powder Coating finish on this. Now, with the Buckeye Bronco frame there, we actually used paint that was custom formulated. We had to use the paint. Uh, the powder coating only comes in certain colors, so to match the face mask correctly, we had to use the custom mixed gray that you see on the Bronco frame. Whatever. This is our frame here from TDK. has the same James Duff four-link suspension on it. Um, two and a half inch lift kit is going to go really, really sweet here when it's done the Dana 44, um, nine inch rear axle, so we can't wait to show you this progress as well. Um, as you can see here, the James Duff uh, four-link suspension here with the black uh, midnight black control arms. Um, it's going to look really, really sweet here that it offsets this whole Bronco here. Um, and we just can't wait to show you the steam here when it's done. It's going to be very, very cool, very sweet, complete one-off truck. For all your classic Bronco needs, your classic Bronco tub needs, for your classic car restoration needs, paint job needs, custom work, give Rust Belt Broncos a call at 330-533-4757, rustbeltbroncos.com. Coming up. <laughs> Even your friends laughed at that. <laughs> That's coming up. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Blue Monkey Father's Day Car Show on Cruisin'. We're getting you ready to wrap things up at the Blue Monkey here. What a fantastic Father's Day car show brought to you by Blue Line Classics. So, of course, you Blue Line Classics people are everywhere. Yes. Jackie, wow, from Blue Hi. Line Classics. What was special about today for you? You know, it was Father's Day, and I talked to so many people today that canceled their golf plans. They canceled plans with other people to come here because they wanted to be here with the classic cars and see people that they know and love and just get together for some beer uh, at the Blue Monkey and just have a good time. Well, then that puts a lot of pressure on Blue Line Classic. But you guys are used to that. It does. What's going on with you guys now? All day long. So we're having a great year. Um, we've, you know, going through inventory like crazy. We've got a lot of investors right now. They're taking money out of their 401ks and they're buying cars because like, it's a, a safer, yeah, just like this Ford right here. Uh, it's a, it's a safer bet right now in, you know, instead of the stock market. To be honest with you, so we're very busy. Uh, we still have overseas buyers, which is amazing. Um, we just shipped a couple of cars to Kuwait, if you can believe that. It's shocking you found time for us. I know. And you got another show coming up. We're humble. We're humble. <laughs> and we're done with it. <laughs> well, you have another show coming up. We have more cruises coming up. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next time. Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> we're humble. <laughs>